State Accounting 20A Stock Dividends Journal Entries. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. You'll find us on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. And I've also formed a LinkedIn group, MBA Accounting and Finance, because a lot of the interest that I get on YouTube is from MBAs, particularly those who have not had a lot of undergraduate accounting. I'd like to jump over to an example on stock dividend journal entries, and part of this is taken from the uh, Kiso Y Grant Y Gant uh, textbook, the third edition. Um, first of all, why do we issue a stock dividend? Well, a dividend exists because we want to reward shareholders. A stock dividend is a way to, re to reward shareholders without paying out cash, as we do in a cash dividend, which is what we normally see. And I want to make a distinction between several terms. We have a um, declaration date, a record date, and a distribution date. You can see the three terms here. If you look at an earnings announcement for a company, they use or a dividend announcement for a company, they use these terms. So Anheuser-Busch, for example, declares a $0.25 cent per share dividend for shareholders of record as of December 15th, payable December 27th, as an example. Those three dates are mentioned. So let's talk about what happens on those three dates. We define stock dividend here, a pro rata, based on your existing ownership, a pro rata distribution of the company's own stock to shareholders. So it's coming, the stock is coming from somewhere, from the company somewhere. The impact on the equity section of the balance sheet is it's a decrease in retained earnings. It's an increase in paid-in capital. Just as we issue stock, it's an increase in paid-in capital. When we distribute a stock dividend, it's also an increase in paid-in capital. So in my example, we've got 70,000 shares outstanding. It's a 15% stock dividend, which means we are going to issue as a stock dividend 10,500 shares. Let's assume further that the market price on the date we declare the dividend, which we're going to see at the left in a minute, is $35. The par value per share is $5. And again, par value is a, at this point, pretty much a bookkeeping notation, a dollar value we tag to the stock. We're going to say in this example it's $5 a share, so the amount of paid in capital is the difference between the market price in blue of 35, the par value in green of 5, or $30 a share. So first of all, we have a journal entry on the declaration date where we're going to reduce retained earnings. We're going to credit an account stock dividend distri distributable, almost like a pay it, almost like a uh, credit like accounts payable, it's a credit, except it's in the equity section. And the difference is paid in capital and excess of par, which we see when we issue stock. And the way I got the numbers was 10,500 shares times the $5 par, that's the stock dividend distributable, and 10,500 shares times the paid-in capital number that I calculated is the credit to additional paid-in capital. And the entry balances. And this, the purpose of this entry is to declare a 15% stock dividend. So if you have 100 shares of stock before the stock dividend, you'll have 115 shares after the stock dividend. On the record date, the record date, there is no entry because the record date represents the date on which a shareholder must be an owner to receive the dividend. No entry there. On March 23rd, which was our distribution date, that stock dividend distributable credit is debited and it go, adjusts the account to zero, and we credit to increase common stock for that same 52,000. We have a similar uh, a similar example down here. 
ABC has 10,000 shares of stock outstanding before the dividend with a par value of a dollar per share. And by the way, the link is right here to this example. There's the link. On December, 20, on December 1st, ABC declares a stock dividend, that's the declaration date, to be distributed on December 21st, that's the distribution date, to shareholders of record on December 10th, that's the record date. And then they tell us the market price of the stock on the declaration date, which is different from par value. The dividend distributed to shareholders will be 1,000 shares of stock, which is 10% of the shares outstanding now. It goes on to say, so the recorded value of this dividend is $5,000, 1,000 shares, the amount of the stock dividend times the market price of $5 a share. Same type of earnings, of entries. Stock dividend receivable, 1,000 shares times a dollar. Paid in capital, 1,000 shares times $4, the difference between market value and par value. That's what we do on the declaration date. On the distribution date, we debit this account to bring it to zero. And we credit to increase common stock because those shares are now owned. Those shares are now outstanding, which is defined as owned by shareholders. And they have a note that I think is a good one down here at the bottom of the page. Note that stock dividends distributable is not a liability, like an account payable. It is actually a component of stockholders' equity. Okay. This is in contrast to a dividend payable <clears throat> for any sort of tangible dividend when you're actually giving somebody something like cash or property. Dividends payable is a liability. Stock dividends distributable is not. It's a small difference, but I think it's worth mentioning. That's as far as we're going to get on Intermediate Accounting 20. We have a not on the web page. On the website, which is additional videos and spreadsheet templates, not on YouTube. Here's my uh, YouTube channel. You can email me for a complete list of the videos on the web. A complete list of videos if you'd like them. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's our email and phone number. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.